It's finally here. I've been waiting to make this video from around a month to share everything I saw for CES 2025. Because things there were kind of crazy. Flexible batteries, extra bright micro OLED displays, faces for our headsets, crazy controllers, mind reading bracelets, waveguides on glasses, and even a motorhome with an expendable VR room. And they're here, so welcome to the VRTech channel. 2025 will be massive for XR, and I had a glimpse on uh, what this year is actually gonna bring to us. What to expect and what to be excited for, because things are changing fast. So, well, let's get into it. All right, here we are. I want to start with VR because it was a kind of my primary reason to actually go to the show this year because many different headsets were actually shown and all with amazing screens, resolutions and technologies. And I have to say that this year didn't disappoint. There was a big shift when talking about headsets as pretty much everyone featured next generation visuals. Sony with the Xin, Pimax with the Super, Play for Dream with the, well, Play for Dream, Shiftall with the Megane X Super Light AK and also some hidden headsets I can talk about just yet. All of them with X-ray resolution and clear lenses and compact, at least most of them. With no screen door effect whatsoever, amazing colors, going back to the already great Quest 3 felt like a harder than ever, let's say. <laughs> So let's start with Sony. Sony presented Xin, giving a name to a business-oriented headset that uh, they unveiled last year and confusingly introduced a new headset in black with similar specs but no eye tracking to cut costs. I had the opportunity to try the one with the eye tracking and the visuals were very stunning, but the demo was laughable at best. They're literally having me like moving around like a rock with a controller. Immersive. How exciting. I have to say though, it was pretty challenging, all thanks to the new controllers that they presented. It's actually a clicker that works in 6DOF and the ring that works in 6DOF as well and you can click on it. And yeah, tracking here for the controllers was spotty at best and the ergonomics was just bad. Hopefully this will be kind of an add-on uh, to have if you want to because trying to reinvent the wheel with is not needed. Hopefully we're gonna get good controllers for them considering that they already have good controllers with the PSVR 2. Anyway, amazing visuals, gearing comfort, light, classy with mixed reality and able to also work as standalone. Bit expensive though, over $3,000 if I recall it correctly. It was actually targeted to Hollywood productions with also some crazy motion platforms that I will love to use for a set of course up, but fitting that in the house would be kind of challenging for me. Going on one of my favorite was actually the Sheepfall, the Megane X Super Light AK. This is another ultra end VR headset with pancake lenses, micro OLEDs at 3840 by 3840 each aisle built directly for VR enthusiasts. It's crazy how much this thing is packing such a small form factor. The standouts were the visuals, even if the screens were a bit dim, and the fact that you could tune in in the comfort with so many different settings. Swivels, eye relief, diopters, flip up, motorized IPD, I mean, everything. By the way, this is a full blown PC VR headset that will work on the Steam VR tracking. But yeah, the craziest thing of it for sure, the crazy controllers. This will flip out of the way if you wanna grab anything. I already made that kind of joke, so I'm not gonna do it again. And they were great in games with every button needed. These are also for SteamVR tracking, so if you want to use them with a headset that you already have, uh, you can. There's no problem at all. Pretty cool. But probably my favorite doll, weirdly enough, was the Play for Dream from Play for Dream. This is full standalone headset running on the XR2 Gen 2 Plus chipset that aims to be the full competitor on Android to the Apple Vision Pro, but with controllers for gaming. In fact, the software is a complete copy of the Vision OS and it's the weirdest thing because I rarely tried headsets working so well in a demo and it felt like a, a finite product with the great visuals Again, pancake lenses and micro OLED 3840 by 3840 each eye, starting to see a pattern, eh? Software that was running like a charm and controllers that worked perfectly to play even PC VR. In fact, I played Half-Life Alyx and some simulators with it. This could be a great for all headset, able to run your Android applications and hopefully it will get a good VR store to actually have immersive applications as well. They talk about the fact that they want to integrate Android XR with it, so hopefully that will happen in the future. It's just kind of sad to see that the software is actually copying Apple instead of trying something by themselves because the headset is very solid indeed and will sell for less than $2,000. That is like 
almost half of what is the Vision Pro. But yeah, overall there I had a great experience, completely in contrast unfortunately with what I saw from Pimax. While the Crystal Super was very interesting, it wasn't ready to be shown, visuals were great and the ability to swap between lenses and screens for different technology including micro OLED and pancake is nuts, but the distortion there was a big thing, making it impossible to use. At least they were aware of it and I'm sure they're trying to fix it already. Also because from the latest news they actually pushed to April the first shippings. The QLED was extremely bright, colors were great, and the FOV was finally a bit larger than usual. So yeah, fingers crossed. Also about this extra bright screen, I wanna mention Optics X. That's how you say it, I think. As they had the screen and packing lenses combo that was absolutely brilliant, fantastic. I never seen a micro OLED display that bright and crisp. Even if we're running on the same 3840 by 3840 that other manufacturers are using, like they actually optimize uh, the visual clarity and the brightness as well. They're working on the Pancake XR and I'd say with those screens and lenses, we all need pancakes in our lives. Let's get to the weird stuff though, because CS had a lot of it. Optics Lenses, yes, yeah, very similar name, is actually working of lenses that can fit in a wafer, you know, the same one that they use to create chips, as they are completely flat, extra light, and also crisp, and in the future they will be able to replace even the smaller pancake lenses. The only problem, well, they are kind of expensive to make, also making a lens for a VR headset will take a lot of space on the wafer, and they rather right now optimize everything, uh, making smaller lenses for camera sensors and something like that. But yeah, finger crossed over there as well. Now this was very weird as ultra reality is actually working on adding screen to the front of your headset or to robots, similar to what we saw with the Apple Vision Pro, but actually better. The 3D feeling was actually very convincing and they had a cool demo where you could actually see the face of the person and overlay that with what the person was actually playing in VR. So into different 3D planes. I'm not sure if the Apple Vision Pro really sold me on the fact of having a screen on my face, but having an accessory, so choosing if uh, you wanna have it or not, that will be a kind of good. Also, this felt like impossible, but many boots were actually starting to show flexible batteries that could be used in the future in our VR accessories. So imagine able to actually fit the battery all around the strap on the headset to optimize the battery life and having a better weight balance at the same time. Bit early for it, but pretty cool. But there were of course many accessory makers over there. A really interesting one was Syntec. I actually wanted to see uh, like their solution for the Apple Vision Pro because that is kind of a hard headset said to make more comfortable, being a very front heavy, and actually working on a hard strap solution for the Vision Pro with also the battery integrated in the back, so to have a better weight balance altogether. Also solving the fact that you have to bring the battery with you all the time. That really went overboard with padding, so it really felt like a pillow on your head, but if you wanna use the battery, oh, it's usual, detached, so you can still use it, and they actually sell a hip strap to use for it. Pretty cool. They actually make so many accessories also for the Quest 3. I tried their grips with the integrated batteries, and you're gonna be able to use them and recharge them with a just USB Type-C. They have link cables and interchangeable battery strap solution, all for the Quest 3 and the Quest 3S. I'm gonna leave their link in the description below if you wanna check them out. And also had a, like a crazy backpack made for VR with the top part was actually just for the VR headset and the rest of the backpack for your laptop and all the other stuff. Uh, it's kind of crazy to see for a VR enthusiast and uh, yeah, traveling with it would be pretty cool. Hopefully they're gonna have it ready soon. Another crazy accessory was actually Mudra that was showing their mind reading bracelet and non-invasive devices that you can put on your wrist and it will read electrical signals from your brain and translate them in input for your devices. Very similar to what Meta is trying to do with their CTR lab acquisition. I had a small demo and the potential there was actually crazy and it's something that is already hitting the market right now. Now, while not ready for VR yet, apparently they are be central for smart glasses. And yeah, talking about AR smart glasses, I think they were the big part of CES this year. They were everywhere, they felt finally normal, and the booths were just taken by storm. Rocket, Xreal, Visix, Rayneo, Lenovo, they were all there. As for more traditional smart viewers, Xreal are the new The One, and The One Pro with actually thinner optics. I actually reviewed The One on the channel, so you can check them out, and over there I had the demo with the Ultra, and was 
kind of cool. This has full 65 tracking, so you can actually move around the panels and hand tracking for interaction. I had a demo with some sports and productivity scenarios. 3DUF is usable for sure and enough for media consumption, but I really think that 6DUF is the next step for these classes. And it's exactly what we started to see from pretty much everyone. Rocket had their demo with the Max 2 modified for 6DUF. I actually made a full video about their classes if you want to check them out. They were used in a museum workthrough. Uh, where things will actually come to life in VR. I would love to go around Rome and try to recreate the landscape and how Rome looked in the Roman Empire with something like this. That's for sure the future of learning. But the most interesting one for me was for sure their take on their ribbon glasses, but just a generation ahead. In fact, in this small form factor, they were able to cram the full XR1 processor battery in the stereo monochrome screen. They work like a HUD. These really look like a regular pair of glasses they're extra light, but with the ability to bring you notifications, AI assistance right in front of you, or my favorite function to translate what the person is saying in front of you, creating captions to be able to even keep a regular eye contact with them. I'm gonna show you a demo because it was kind of mind blowing to me. I was able to speak in English and uh, the person in front of me was speaking Chinese and he could understand no problem and reply directly. Let's go. Oh yes, I did have breakfast today. I had some uh, granola bars. Did you have any breakfast? Hot dogs? Really? <laughs> Unfortunately, these are not available in the US just yet, but just in China. And I tried to understand if people were actually interested in having something like that. I'm for sure I am. And if you are as well, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. It's no pre-order or anything like that. You know, just stay updated. So hopefully they will bring it over here as well. I need it. <laughs> what they're selling right now is the Joy with the Station 2, a full 3D OF running full Android to be able to use your application in a spatial environment. I actually did a preview of it on the channel, so you can check it out. Link in the description. Talking about Rainio, they really surprised me as they show a new pair of smart viewers at actually a lower cost. But the crazy part was the X3, that is an evolution of the X2 that we reviewed on the channel. This is pretty much the meta Orion glasses here already, with full on AR on glasses arriving already later this year. These are extra compact, looking like a regular pair of glasses. They have an XR2 Gen 2 inside, full 6 DOF, completely standalone, and with two full color waveguide displays on it. They will be expensive though, at around $1,500, but for sure less expensive than the $10,000 Meta Horizon glasses. So yeah, call me excited. But if you want full AR, this is curious because Meta Lens actually recreated a now defunct HoloLens 2 uh, with full Android running on the XR2 Gen 2 platform as well. Now you have the HoloLens, but uh, with Android and uh, it ran very, very good. Tracking was put on and tracking was put on. Cool experience. God, I miss HoloLens. But anyway, guys, these were all the most exciting things that I actually saw at CES. There were many prototypes like, uh, you know, for hand tracking, like gloves and anything, but they felt more like prototypes and I think like we want to see what is going to arrive in 2025. What I really loved this year was the fact that VR, XR actually felt normal for once. Uh, they didn't feel like something just in a different corner that no one was uh, you know, excited for, but because quality is getting so good and because Mark Glass is actually uh, getting a foothold uh, in the market, everything felt more accepted also to regular people. And to be honest, I love that. I love that I have to be in a line to actually try something that is extra related because it means that there's interest around. And uh, yeah, things are evolving very fast. XR glasses are gonna be the thing this year for sure. And uh, we're gonna get many, many different like high-end VR headsets. Also because Android XR is around the corner. Good or not, that's the thing. But here we have it. That was all guys. Do you like the direction XR is taking right now? Are you excited for all these micro OLED displays? I also wanna thank the Scared Ghost that actually helped me all around CES. We kind of collaborated on pretty much everything. I'm gonna leave the link to their blog down below so if you want to read instead of re-watching again this video or all my other videos, uh, you can do it. Uh, he's a great writer. So thanks, Tony, uh, for all the help. You can actually insult him on the blog. I give you the permission. 
Anyway, guys, as always, if you like the video, like, if you did like it, just like, subscribe to the channel for more of VR tech. If you really love the channel, join the button there, little on further, also the Patreon. Thanks to the Patreons for joining the channel, of course. And I see you guys next video. Thanks for watching.